Welcome to Fox TV News, where everything is true. Fire at Heidel High, blaze breaks out in main office. Students at Heidel High School in St. Catherine were sent scampering for a cover Thursday morning after a fire broke out in the school's main office. A student who spoke with reporters stated that students first noticed smoke coming from the main office and alerted the auxiliary staff. At one point, I thought there was going to be an explosion because where the fire is, there's some electrical stuff there, 16-year-old Morgan Samuel stated. The teenager said that she was on the compound to sit one of her Caribbean secondary examination counter exams. She said the auditorium where the 9 a.m. examination was to take place is directly in front of the building now on fire. Members of the Jamaica Fire Brigade are on the scene trying to control the fire, which, according to students, has begun to spread. The cause of the fire is unknown at this time. Dad of seven-year-old declines comments on reports child dies from blunt force trauma. Ron Russell, the father of seven-year-old Tiana, who died from blunt force trauma, yesterday declined comment on the controversial circumstances leading up to her death. Not at this time, he told reporters before ending the phone call. Family members yesterday reported that an autopsy was done earlier the day and had identified the worrying cause of death. Cops step up hunt for two men who were among gunslingers in Riverton. The police say that they have stepped up their manhunt for two men who were among a group of gunmen who engaged law enforcers in a shootout in Riverton City, St. Andrew, on Tuesday afternoon. Three men were shot dead and four other persons, two females and two males, were taken into custody during the incident. At the same time, the Independent Commission of Investigations Indicom has started an investigation into the incident. Reports are that a team of motorcycle personnel from the St. Andrew South Quick Response Team led the way in tackling the heavily armed gunmen in the gritty inner city community. Reports are that the members of the bike team signaled two motor vehicles to stop along Ferguson Drive in Riverton City. Indicom in a release said reports it received were that male occupants of one of the vehicles exited and started firing at the police. The police reported they returned the fire and three men were subsequently found suffering from gunshot injuries. Two firearms, a UTG AK-47, a salt rifle and a Browning 9mm pistol were seized by the police. The men were later pronounced dead at the Kingston Public Hospital. The three deceased men remain officially unidentified up to the present time. Bahamian National reported the gun missing in Jamaica. 51-year-old Julian Develox a Bahamian national has been missing since Thursday, March 23rd. He is of dark complexion, medium built, and about 152 centimeters tall. Reports from the Port Royal Police are that about 6.30 p.m., Julian was last seen on Broad Street in Port Royal, wearing a blue jeans and a pair of blue Wallaby Clark shoes. He has not been heard from since then. Anyone knowing the whereabouts of Julian is being asked to contact the Port Royal Police at 876-967-8068, the police 119 emergency number or the nearest police station. Man on run after being implicated in fire at girlfriend's house. A man is on the run after a house belonging to his girlfriend and her three children were reportedly set ablaze in New Green Mandeville, Manchester on Monday. An adjoining grocery shop was also destroyed in the fire that is believed to have been set by the woman's boyfriend. According to preliminary reports, about 4 p.m. on Monday, the man poured gasoline onto the building after an earlier confrontation with his girlfriend. The man then allegedly set the building on fire before escaping from the scene. Luckily, the woman and her children were not harmed in the process. The fire resulted in approximately $400,000 in damage, according to fire personnel. Investigations into the incident are ongoing. Cabinet to decide if COVID-19 restrictions should be tightened. With the early warning signs of a potential spike in COVID-19 cases, Prime Minister Andrew Holness says the COVID subcommittee of Cabinet will be meeting this weekend to review the country's situation to consider whether there may be a need to tighten some of the measures in advance of August 10 when they are set to expire. He made the announcement during a sitting of the House of Representatives yesterday. I want to urge all Jamaicans to exercise extreme caution. 
This is not the time to become complacent. I want to reinforce the need for everyone to be vigilant about observing the protocols and keeping ourselves and each other safe, Holness stated. Some may say that I'm being alarmist and that some amount of uptick in our number would have been natural, seeing that we have now allowed greater movement and greater gatherings. We have seen from experience of other countries and our own experience how insidious this virus is and how quickly spikes can occur, he continued. Prime Minister further warned that the more transmissible Delta variant is now the dominant variant globally. It, the Delta variant, now represents almost all cases in the UK and 83% of all Jerome sequence samples in the United States. While the samples we have sent off from Jerome sequencing have not indicated the presence of the variant in Jamaica thus far, it would be wishful thinking for us to believe that it will not make its way to Jamaica if it is not already here, Holness stated. Chang condemns violence against children. Minister of National Security Dr. Horace Chang says he strongly condemns all forms of violence and abuse against the nation's children. He said while children are being courted by gangs from an early age, it would be usual that they seek and receive protection from the adults in their lives but noted that in those places where they should be protected at home and in the church, they are being traumatized, assaulted and victimized. Chong said the government is utterly opposed to the inhumane treatment of the nation's children and is resolute in stamping out the unwanted practice of violence against them. This government has been explicit and abundantly clear that we have a zero-tolerance approach to all forms of violence, whether it be criminal or otherwise, especially when committed on the elderly and the young. Chang said, adding that attacks on our children are particularly abhorrent. The minister stated, however, that he is encouraged by the work being done by various commissions and agencies, such as the Child Protection and Family Services Agency, to identify the impact of early exposure to violence on future life choices. The results of this work should provide some guidance on how to assist these children in their recovery from these acts of violence, he said. Chang's comments were made against the background of the case Nashawn Brown, a four-year-old who was severely beaten by his stepfather and subsequently died earlier this week. TRN to be national identification number, Chuck says. Justice Minister Delroy Chuck has confirmed that Jamaicans will be allowed to use their current tax registration number TRN as their national identification number when the National Identification and Registration Act takes effect likely sometime this year. Chuck, who chaired the Joint Select Committee of the Parliament, said that reviewed and examined the National Identification and Registration Bill 2020 gave the confirmation on Tuesday as he tabled and debated the report of the committee in the House of Representatives. With the Parliament set to go on summer recess, Chuck signaled that the intention was to open the debate on the bill when the House reconvened its sitting in September. 122 COVID-19 cases, 5 more deaths recorded in Jamaica. For the first time since May 27, Jamaica recorded over 100 COVID-19 cases, with 122 cases being reported over a 24-hour period up to Tuesday afternoon, according to the Ministry of Health and Wellness. Five more COVID-19 deaths were also recorded over the reporting period, bringing the overall coronavirus death toll in Jamaica to 1,163. The deceased are a 49-year-old male from Kingston and St. Andrew, a 71-year-old female from St. Catherine, and three females ages 74, 75, and 84 from St. James. However, one other death of COVID-19 patient on Tuesday has been categorized as being coincidental. Meanwhile, the 122 new COVID-19 cases were obtained from 2,257 samples, resulting in a positivity rate of 16.1%. There were also 27 recoveries on the day, bringing the overall tally to 46,751. The newly confirmed COVID-19 cases bring the total number of cases on record for the island to 51,404. Of the newly confirmed cases, 65 are females and 57 males, with ages ranging from 36 days to 108 years. The cases were Kingston and St. Andrew 33, St. Catherine 22, 
Westmoreland 18, St. Anne 11, St. Elizabeth 10, Manchester 9, St. James 7, Clarendon 6, Hanover 3, St. Mary 2, and St. Thomas 1. There are 28 moderately ill patients and 11 critically ill patients among the 3,136 active cases now under observation in Jamaica. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, and click the notification bell for daily updates.